I asked my brother, um, I'm going to be clear about something. Today is the 8th of August, 2024. Well, 10 years ago, I asked my brother, would you want a woman like our mother? He didn't say no. He said, hell no. And I was asking him that question because what a lot of us don't realize is that our character of interaction starts at home in the family. And uh, it's the reason why I tell individuals I have a pick on me complex. I'm the youngest of four boys. My brothers used to kick my ass. I'm glad they did, but I'm just saying I have a pick on me complex. Like you're picking on me. Um, my grandmother on my father's side told me that Josephine never taught her kids to want for nothing. Josephine is my mother, my mother's mother, excuse me. And it shows when you look at my aunts and here's a striking perspective. When you look at my aunts, meaning the generation ahead of me, they all still look good. When I look at my cousins of this generation with me, back in 1995, some 30 years ago, my cousin said, look at you and Donnie, y'all look good. Look at us, we look bad. Our side of the family look bad. That's what she said. That was 30 years ago. I have adapted my father's side of the family's curriculum, character, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When I talk about the women of my generation, my mother found a way to delusionize it and flip it and do all this stuff and ignored the fact that Damn, I want to kill myself. I lost my daughter, uh, uh, a relationship with my daughter. Uh, Attila Sean Bradley continuously tried to get me locked up. It was just, they kicking my door in every other week and I, it was a lot of stress. And my mom said, I don't care about that. You are not to talk about it because you're offending my nieces. I haven't spoke to my mother since. But I want to play something for you guys. Majority of the black women have attitudes in these folks' establishment. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Y'all come to work every single day with a motherfucking attitude. Everybody else so nice, sweet, and jolly, but us, no. We got to have a motherfucking attitude. And we do it in front of customers. That shit is sad. And y'all messy as fuck. Like, why are y'all, why are we as black women are so fucking miserable? And we bring that shit to work. Even at the doctor's office. I mean, everywhere you go. I went to the doctor yesterday. And the, the, my, my nurse was a white lady. She was so nice and sweet. And when she took me to check out to this black lady, the black lady was like, uh, well, you see, she um, over there, don't, don't forget, she can check out too. She can ring out too. Like, why would you say that in front of me, a patient, and have an attitude like, I don't even want you to check me out now. What the fuck is your problem? Bitch, if you didn't want to work, don't come to work. That's your job. It don't matter who don't have a customer. Like, come on, sisters. We need to get it together. We need to keep our attitudes you won't. and our misery you won't. in the car you or won't. at home. You won't. When we clock in and these folks establish oh, yeah. this, we need to have the utmost respect for patients, customers, or no. whatever. No. God damn it. No. Be professional. No. Leave that ghetto shit at home. Y'all weird. I, I don't like y'all. I don't like y'all. From now on. I, white people. I love y'all. I don't like my sisters. Not all of them. But goddamn 99.999% of them. Uh-huh. 999 now. That's what's going on now. And my mom decided, you know, you can't talk about black women because it offends my nieces. The amazing thing about listening to that article right there is it was a black woman herself. 
And this is the perspective that I experienced. And my mother watched me go through it firsthand. My mother, Mary Smith, watched me go through it firsthand, but said, no, no, you can't talk about black women. You can't. So allow me to add some fundamentals to what that woman just said. You know what? I'm going to be specific. I'm going to talk about my mom. My mom says, nope, you cannot talk about black women. I asked my mom to bring resolution to the fact that at that time, my brother and I had not been speaking for 11 years. 11. It's now 16 years we haven't been speaking. My mother is okay with that. But my mother felt the need to talk to me like trash because of what I, because of me talking about what I've been through. My mom said, no, no, you can't talk about it. So she defended her nieces that didn't hear my lecture, that don't give a fuck about me to the extent, don't give a fuck, a fuck about me to the extent. I got my, one of my cousins, Shelly, I hadn't seen her in like seven years. I seen her in New York City. She waved to me, hey. Yeah, Chris is the corny cousin. No, I just, wait, if that was my brother, she would have went over there, hugged him up, introduced her to the friends she was with, introduced him to the friends she was with. I told my mother about that. Mother had nothing to say. My grandmother on my mother's side, Josephine, this is who my grandmother on my father's side said, never tell her kids to want for nothing. I remember one time I was at my grandmother's house when I was about seven years old. I said, grandma is hot. She said, it's hot because you ugly. Just, the, just like that, in that tone. So what I'm noticing, what I'm noticing is my mother side of the family, they're good at attitudes. Ain't none of them successful. They all fucking bums. They all, just like my mom, nobody's, they all got attitudes. So let me give you an example of when my Aunt Wandy used to tell my cousin to go to his room and then my Aunt Leah when she told my cousin Ed to go to his room. Aunt Wandy would say, Montre, go to your room. Simple command, Montre being a kid in my generation. Let me give you the same perspective and narrative when my Aunt Leah, my mother's sister, would tell my cousin Ed to go to his room. Brace yourself. If you got kids listening, you might want to cover their ears. This is how they talk on my mother's side of the family. My mom to include my aunt. Get your motherfucking ass in the fucking room. You heard what I said. You see why my brother said, hell no. When I said, would you want a woman like our mother? You see, what I am talking about here today is an amazing anomaly. A black woman would be obese, but won't talk about that like she talk about her problem with men. She won't have a career. She'll be struggling. She won't talk about that. You get it. She, you got it. She'll talk about her problems with men. She will have problem making her rent every month. She won't talk about that. She'll talk about her problems with rent. I had to listen to my mom all of my life because of problems she had with my dad. Talk to her, the man of her, that was in her life like he was a piece of shit. That's why when I went to go see her in May of 2019, she done ran him away. Now her perspective and narrative is, well, I done ran my, my man away, so now my, my son is here, he loved me, I'ma talk to him like shit. You see, what it gets down to is what I'ma tell y'all like this. Women will talk to the people that love them like shit. The guys that don't, they will beg them. When you coming around? Why you ain't coming to see your kid, et cetera, et cetera. But the men that love them, because they do this to render a response. My mother talked to me like a piece of shit because she thought 
I was gonna respond to her like, why ma, blah, 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 blah. I asked the two questions. I made a statement and asked the two questions. I said, the statement that I made was, ma, it ain't the women of your generation, it's the women in my generation. Her response to that was, and I quote, and I'm not paraphrasing, so what? I got nieces and I'm sure they ain't like that. You're not sure, you're not certain, because your nieces don't come and see you. Do you know that about a hundred times that we went to go visit my relatives, my cousins, that her, my nieces that she's talking about when we was kids, they was over their father's side of the family house. My cousins never came over our house like that, but my mom, the black woman, is defending them by talking to her son like a piece of shit because I said something that offended her nieces and only to say, I'm sure they're not like that. Well. They are like that because they look raggedy as fuck and I, can Im I can't imagine some women li not listening to a piece of shit all their fucking lives turn out to be angels. As a matter of fact, they all lived in the same house. They all was continuing the same tradition as my aunt, my mother's sister. So I'm sure they in fact was like that. So that was the statement. The question that I asked my mom, one of the questions that I asked was, well, me and my brother was at war you said you don't want to get involved. So why are you getting in, why are you jump why are you getting involved with something that I said that may offend your nieces? That was question number one. Question number two, I asked my mother was so when did the love for the mother jump over the sons and transfer to the nieces? I got no answers to neither one of my questions. People, I'm gonna tell you something. In 2016, I brought my mother's boyfriend a car and I sent it to him. And when they got the car, I told him to come outside. I, I want to talk to him. So I told him the reason why I brought him that car is for an apology of how my mother allowed her sister to treat him and her friend to treat him. His response was, well, hell, you owe me a lot more than that. And we laughed. So let me tell you what I mean by how his sister treated him and my mother's friend. You see, my mom was is the type of woman that is living, going, is growing alone by herself. She is reaping the benefits of the fuck way she is when it comes to treating men. All right, and me to include me. So when I say how she allow her, her sister and her, her friend to treat her man, when you go around and say my man ain't shit, he don't tell me what to do, he ain't he. I, I, I take care of my own so he can't tell me nothing. When you run around and make these statements all the time, you see black women don't, black women think that their friend or whoever they say this to is gonna look at their man like, oh, he's a gem. No, they gonna look at him like Mary don't respect him, so why the fuck should I? So my Aunt Leah, house caught on fire, right? My Aunt Leah, her house caught on fire. My mother's boyfriend, the person she was living with, the person that she was benefiting with, her companion said, I'm going to quit my job and the $56,000 that you got an estimate to fix your house, I'm going to go ahead and charge you 40. You put 16 in your pocket. He did the work. He completed the job. My aunt gave him 25,000 and told him, you ain't, you didn't get no goddamn permit. So I'm not paying you. I went over to my aunt's house. I said, auntie, why are you doing this? My auntie was looking at me like, nigga. This is how we do. This is how us feel the bitches do, motherfuckers. <laughs> Your mother talked to him like shit. Why the fuck should I treat him like anything? I called my mom and said, Mom, why are you allowing this to happen? This is your man. You know what my mom said? Oh, 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 dear old mother. My mother, Mary Smith. You know what she said? Why do you care? <laughs> Give me a second. My mother, Mary Smith, said, why do you care? I said, well, good answer. I'm, I got an answer for you. I said, because when you up and decided to move to Florida, that man came with you. As my mother, he's doing me a favor. He's watching over you. So I have a lot of invested interest in this guy. You're down in Florida by yourself now. I, 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 I really want this guy to take care of you and look after you. I don't know if that was an adequate enough answer for the type of woman that my mother is, the type of woman that Josephine Fielder created. But that was the best I had for her. But I did say her sister and her friend. So let me move on to the friend. My mother friend, Valerie, the piece of shit that she is. They all roll in packs. They all roll in packs. The piece of shit that she is. Valerie, her and him decided to open up a business together. 
He gave her a substantial amount of money. I don't know. I say I tell people three thousand dollars, but I'm gonna go ahead and be honest here today. I don't know the st the amount that he gave her to open up the business, but he gave her a business amount. The day that it was time to open up the business, she changed the locks and told him, "Get the fuck out of here and don't ever come back." I then called my mom and said, "Why are you allowing everybody to fuck your man over? Why is everybody taking stabs at your man?" I, I thought my mom was gonna say, "Well, I didn't realize that." Because I talk about them like shit. They was going to treat them like shit too. I thought my mom was going to say that, but she didn't. When my mom talked to me like a piece of shit, my mom truly thought that I was going to respond in a, but why mama? Why? No, you can get the fuck on too. Because what my mom is going to realize is the piece of shit that you want to act, number one, you got outside the lines. See, let me tell you something about individuals, about all you women rocking around here claiming you don't need a man, et cetera, et cetera. No, no, no. That's not natural. That's not natural. Like when you put a perm in your hair and straighten it. It's not natural. It's going to snap back. Your hair is going to snap back. It's going to snap back. It's not natural. All right. So like I was saying, it's not natural. When you hear these women and like my mom, you know, you, you, you listen to these black women and, 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 and the one thing that you should have in your life more than anything, companionship, that's the enemy. Not the fact that you're fat, not the fact that you're going through life without no career, not the fact that you, 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 when you do, when you do a cost of living analysis, you don't have adequate skills to match your fucking need to live. Nope. Nah, -uh. all that. My mom has showed me that nobody will be the enemy, but a man. That's why you see all these women walking around here fat as hell and don't have a man. But but and, and, but make all the issues about men, 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 men can be getting evicted tomorrow. We'll go on, on social media and post a video about men. Everything is about men. The hate of men, men, men. Let me tell you something. You see that dog, that dog back there. You see that dog back there. When that dog see another dog, he start losing his mind. Don't know the dog. Never seen a dog before, but he start losing his mind. You know why? Because he wants companionship. Listen, if you got one dog, get another one. Dogs need to be dogs need to be paired up. They need a companion, just like people need companionship. But these women run around here, these black women around here, and they make man the enemy, and they have hatred in their heart. My mother Mary Smith has hatred in her soul, in her soul, and she got it from her fucking mother. I think my mother and my aunt and my grandmother, like they, they always come in threes. I think. Their official language is curse. I think that 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 when they speak, they must have a minimum of three fucking curse words per five words they speak. It is amazing to listen to them talk. I think about it now, and I, I, I you know, you 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 don't you just think your mom is mad and this and all that. Ladies, get yourself a companionship. Don't be. Don't, what the fuck was that? Don't be like your shit ass mother, because they're gonna be in their seventies. Growing old alone. And when you're alone, your brain will create a companion. You think I'm bullshitting? You remember the movie Castaway? Tom Hanks? You remember that movie? He created the ball, Wilson? Yeah. Yep. That's how I knew. Listen. When I went down there to see my mother, when she talked to me like shit, let me tell you something. You ready for this? Ready for this? Ready for this? Check this out. My mom had that conversation already. Yep. You heard what I just said? My mom had that conversation already. I was just there playing a part. When you are by yourself, you create all, all these narratives. That's why she didn't want to listen to nothing I said. She had that conversation already. My mom was talking to me like she had that conversation a hundred fucking times already. Get yourself a companion. Get you a companion. Get you a companion. This is why you get out the lines. When mom, because my mom don't never talk to men. She just rehearse hate and rehearse hate and rehearse hate. When I came down there, it was showtime. And she didn't even acknowledge my son just drove 800 miles to come see me. Nope, it was, I got to hate this man while he here. This, he, I don't see nobody often, so I got to exercise some fucking hate. 
you will not. My mother will not go through life thinking that her fucking attitude is okay. And what happens is, you heard the term, you're getting out of line. That's what happens when hatred, when you're consumed with hatred, you get outside the lines. That's what happens when you're consumed. Remember, there are three stages. The introduction, the overwhelming, and the consumption. My mom is consumed with hatred. And a lot of you fucking women are heading there. And I can see it already. So I want to be clear. Let me play this black. Let, let me play this back, black woman. Hold on. majority of the black women have attitudes in these folks establishment. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? It ain't just Y'all come to work every single day with a motherfucking attitude. Everybody else so nice, sweet, and jolly, but us, no. We got to have a motherfucking attitude. And we do it in front of customers. That shit is sad. And y'all messy as fuck. Like, why are y'all, why are we as black women are so fucking miserable? You bring that shit to work. Even at the doctor's office. I mean, everywhere you go. I went to the doctor yesterday. Everywhere you go. And the, the, my my nurse was a white lady. She was so nice and sweet. And when she took me to check out to this black lady, the black lady was like, uh, well, you see, she um, over there, don't, don't forget, she can check out too. She can ring out too. Like, why would you say that in front of me, a patient, and have an attitude like, I don't and my mom claim trash like this doesn't exist. Claim her hating me for saying it, but then ironically saying that her nieces aren't like that. And it's from the same fucking DNA. Josephine Fielder, a piece of trash that had her ass up in the air and took dick from multiple motherfuckers. Didn't tell my mother who her fucking father was. My, and, and, and my mother's delusional fucking mind state is, oh, my dad didn't love me. My dad didn't love me. I said, ma. You know, after doing what I've been doing for so long now, I don't think your dad was not around. I said, if your dad was not around, if your dad was not around, then your mother would have told you his name. Your, your mother would have told you his name if he was not around. I said, the reason why your mother did not tell you your dad was around, did not tell you your dad's name, because he was around and you would have ran into him. I said, Ma, do you blame your mother for any part of you not having a relationship with your father? No. Well, she put her ass up in the air for a married man. You, 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 he supposed to come around? He was married. They ain't lived together. But after all, who the fuck would want to live with Josephine Fielder? Who the fuck would want to live with my mom? I'm sure my uncle... Listen, my uncle Eddie and my aunt Leah, they don't even have the same fucking room. They don't even stay on the same floor. I don't fucking blame them. Let me let this beautiful queen finish. I want you to check me out now. What the fuck is your problem? Bitch, if you didn't want to work, don't come to work. That's your job. It don't matter who don't have a customer. Like, come on, sisters. We need to get it together. We need to keep our attitudes and our misery in the car or at home. And when we clock... But my mom claimed, oh, no. Oh, no. Women aren't like this. When you talk about this, it's very offensive. Oh, oh. Fuck what you've been through, son. Fuck the fact that you don't have a relationship with your daughter. Fuck the fact that she tried to get you locked up so many times. Because what she said is black women are miserable. Fuck her. She's trying to invoke her misery onto you. Fuck the product that her mother produced. Now she's just trying to be a tyrant to you. Fuck all that. How dare you talk about it? It offends my nieces. And, and these folks' establishments. We need to have the utmost respect for patients, customers, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Be professional. Impossible. Leave that ghetto shit at home. Impossible. Y'all weird. I, I don't yes, like Yes, it. yes, yes. I don't like y'all. So I, I don't either. I don't either. White people. I love y'all. But stop hiring black women to work in your fucking establishment. Stop. Stop.
You better understand the ethnic clash and collision that you on when you think you're going to get a black fucking woman to come work in your establishment and perform customer service. Stop. Stop. I had a friend. I got a friend of mine went to buy a scratch off, goes in the thing, comes back out, gets the scratch off. He wins. He go back in girl in there motherfucker ain't even speak when he came in blah 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 blah. he said whoa 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 whoa! how did we get here i don't know you motherfucker you should speak when you come in here he should speak when he go into 7-eleven oh, but according to my mother mary smith oh no these scallywags don't exist no <laughs> no no son they don't and then how dare you talk about black women like this well you know what it was nice fucking knowing you you get on with your life. You have a lot of hate and hurt in your heart. Ma, you should go ahead and get that fucking shit looked at. I want to be clear about something. I haven't spoke to my mom in five years. I have no intentions on speaking to my mom. I have no, I, I, if something happened to her tomorrow, I do, I'm going to be clear. I don't care. I'm going to help y'all understand something. I'm going to help y'all understand something. I am 100% in full understanding that nobody gives a fuck about me but me. You see that? I am home. That is my house right there. I am in front of my house. I am in full understanding that nobody gives a fuck about me but me. I just came from the gym. It is now 10 10. 10 10 a.m. I got to the gym about 6 15. I go to the gym every day. I take care of myself. I am in full understanding that nobody gives a fuck about me but me. I am in full understanding that the term, the hero will live long enough to become the villain is what I'm experiencing right now. Let me slow that down for you. The hero will live long enough to become the villain. So all the things that I did for my brothers, all the things that I did for my mom, all the things that I did for people, it means nothing. Now I'm looked at as the bad guy. I can take that. Because I'm going to respond with, I don't give a fuck about you neither. You see, my mother would tell me, would tell people, but I love my son. No, 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 you don't. So let me sum it up and say this. You treat me like shit, but tell me you love me. You treat me like shit, but tell me you love me. I'm not going to treat you like shit, but tell you I don't give a fuck about you. You could die tomorrow. I do not care. Make sure everybody, don't contact me. I don't give a fuck about nobody. You understand? I am self-sufficient. I don't give a fuck about, no. if I am sick, if I am sick, the military will take care of me. I got that in the bag. I take care of myself. I just went shopping, motherfuckers. You see that, motherfuckers? You see that, motherfuckers? What'd that say again? I just went shopping, motherfuckers. You see what I, you see what I eat as a snack? This is my snack, motherfuckers. <laughs> I cracked myself up. You see what I drink? I drink about four of these a day. These are my snacks, motherfuckers. I drink that one. I have two in the house. I have one in the house already because I brought two yesterday, but I only drank one. So I got three. Oh my God, this is good. I go Aldi. This is what I eat, motherfuckers. You see what I eat, motherfuckers? This is what I eat, motherfuckers. I eat one of these a day. I make my eggs and I put half of this in there. I eat, well, I don't eat one a day because I eat half of it a day. I put, I make six eggs and I put half of this in it. You see these? You see these motherfuckers? You see these motherfuckers? You see these motherfuckers? You want a yum yummy quattro? You want your yum yummy? Ah, 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 ah. Oh, my little quacho. Mwah. Ouch, man. You gonna ear flap me? You gonna flap me on camera? Shit. But um, let me finish the video, quacho. Then we gonna get out of the car. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. So I take care of myself. So as much as I talk about the fucked up ways of other things, I take care of myself. People, I'm gonna tell you something. I was watching a video today. It, it, I was watching a video. And the video was talking about massive car notes. One dude had a... Ford Raptor and and uh, and uh, a Ford Raptor and he was paying 1300 a month one dude one person had a fucking uh, a Highlander Toyota Highlander they were paying 1100 a month do you know what my car note is 
My car note is 80. Hold on. Hold on. My car note is. My car note is 810 a month. 810 a month is my car note. But hold on. Eight ten a month. This is my car. So, uh, let me let me give you a better look. So this is my car. That's uh, that's my car. So I know what you're saying. You're saying you pay eight ten a month for that. No, that's actually two car notes. One car note is two ninety six, and one is five fourteen. This is the five fourteen car. This is the two ninety six car. This is the two ninety six car note. This is a 296 car note. So I have two car, two car notes, two two car notes, totaling eight hundred and fourteen dollars. Two ninety six and two ninety six and uh, five fourteen. So that's my life. I have, I have, I have a bunch of cars, but the two car notes that I have are those two cars. This one. And the BMW. Now, uh, at 3 o'clock today, that one's out on lease. I got that car listed on Turo for $160 a day. It's out for about 12 days out of the month. All right. That's my house with a, a mortgage, $754 mortgage. So I have a beautiful life. I make tons of money and I have very low living expenses. I have real nice shit. I have a beautiful life. What's my point? I'm glad you asked. I don't need you. If you think you're going to treat me like shit and talk to me like shit under the context of I need you, I'm your mother, I'm, 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 and you will, and one day you're going to call me. I'm going to be clear about something. I love my father. Rest in peace, Pop. I am the only, listen, the last time my dad gave me money, I was 12 years old. 12. I am the only one of my father's kids, with the exception of my brother that passed away. I'm the only one of my son, my father's kids he didn't give money to in his adult life. He didn't give money to after 12 years old. I am very self-sufficient. I took the lessons that my parents taught me and I used them in life and I flourished. My mom's lesson, teach people how to treat you. How ironic. The very, the strongest lesson that my mom taught me is the very thing that I had to ultimately use on her. Hey, listen, man, send this video to somebody you love, somebody you know. Uh, like I said, I got a beautiful life. I have zero stress in my life. The military gives me $4,173 every month, right? And that's one income out of six streams of income I got. I have a good life. I've done well. You're not going to talk to me like I'm a piece of shit because I don't fucking need you. I don't. Bye.